Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Paul in here for Splenic Entertainment and we're going to talk about the Bird ES1 once again and I've made a list of five things that I wish I knew and thought about before buying the Bird. So even though I talked to you guys how amazing of a scooter it is, there is some flaws and I had to dig a little bit deep to find some of them but I still there. So the first flaw is actually you and how much do you weigh? Now, as you guys know, I'm a bit of a bigger person. I've always been a bigger person, but I wanted to have an electric scooter. Now, a lot of electric scooters on the market are capping at about 220 pounds for a pretty reasonable price. Now, I'm a little bit heavier than that. Bird ES1 is one of those that advertise themselves as a 220 capacity. Now, it does impact your battery, and that's my number one flaw associated with it, is that you and how much you weigh would impact how much range and power you can actually get in the scooter. Now, the scooter does still go 15 miles an hour, but it does take a little bit longer for it to get into that range. Um, I've had one of my neighbors in my building uh, be on it herself, with her six-year-old child and she was flying. Versus me, I kind of start going, going, going and slowly get up to that 15 miles an hour. So that's something you might need to think about how much of a range uh, your weight is going to give you uh, stock-wise. I know I talked to you guys before that you can do modifications to your Bird ES1, that you can buy additional battery banks, that you can uh, potentially modify it because there's a big modding community associated with electric scooters. So, but you do need to think about it out of the box. How long is your range? Now, the second complaint that I have for it is also tied to it, is how fast do you plan on going? And that if you go really, really fast, closer to that 15 miles an hour range, that your battery is going to be drained. It doesn't have the beefiest battery on board stock-wise, once again, not including the potential battery expansions you can get for it. But if you're going 15 miles an hour and you are a bigger person, you are going to drain that battery like you'd have no idea. So you need to take that's the second consideration. Um, if you are going about half the speed, you're going to get a lot better mileage. But that is something that you're not really told that you, on the box when discussing the range of the scooter of that how how the battery i mean how is your performance how your speed is going to impact how fast or and how far you can go on it now the third factor and the final factor that is tied to the previous two is inclines now i live in new york city which uh, does have some hills and valleys on the streets and the parks and i've taken it on all surfaces um, on the flat range, your scooter is doing amazing. It has a wonderful sound to it. It has great motor, great speed. But if you do try to go a bit of an incline hill, more than about 20 degrees, the motor is starting to struggle. Now, do keep in mind, this is only my feedback with me being a larger person. If you are a smaller person, um, it's still going to struggle, but potentially not as much. Um, but it's also going to impact your battery. So that's another thing, is that any sort of large inclines are draining the battery because you're driving more power, more battery into the motor, and it's going to impact it. Uh, I've done flat surface tests for about the same distance as an incline surface, um, and there is a lot of range. Now, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I might do some more documented um, and scientific tests in the future, but it's something you might need to consider where you live. Uh, if it's a full hilly area, Bird ES1 might not be the best scooter for you. If you live in mostly flat areas or you plan on riding flat areas, maybe it's a great buy for you, especially for the price that you're getting for it. Now, the fourth feature or the fourth flaw I see in the scooter is suspension or the lack of it. Now it does have tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a suspension to it, just to kind of help you balance out, but it's nowhere near compared to some more advanced or more expensive scooters, even in the Segway series. Um, now, as you guys might know, Segway has the nine bot series and they have more suspension 
And if you look at something like the boosted board scooter that has crazy, crazy suspension, um, you see a difference. Now, why does that matter? Now, if you're going over any sort of bumps or curbs or uneven surfaces, you're more likely to scratch the bottom of your scooter. That's the first problem. And second of all, you are going to feel a lot of those surfaces on your feet. Now, oftentimes I ride my scooter in my flip-flops or my sandals. So it's almost like I'm touching the ground but moving at a tremendous speed. And after a while, your feet do start to shake a little bit. There is some tension associated with it. So keep in mind is that standard, once again, there is no suspension, a very limited suspension. Um, once again, if you plan on taking in maybe to very flat surfaces, that there's not a lot of curbs, there's not a lot of obstacles associated with it, it might be great. Uh, if, but if you do plan on going over curbs or little bumps or rocks on the road, you are going to feel like I've been in a situation that I'm like, ouch, that definitely broke something off the bottom of the scooter or truly scratched it up. It does have very strong plastic on the bottom of it. So fingers crossed, uh, every time I've checked, there hasn't been any major damage. Now, my only concern is that all the components of the scooter do lie underneath it. So that's the only scary part. So you might want to protect it. You might want to wrap it. Uh, or you might just want to get suspension or make your own suspensions for it. So the final thing that I consider to be a flaw, which is a bit of a picky flaw, is that there is no Bluetooth or app support. Now, as I mentioned, um, Boosted Board, um, I mean, Segway, who the company is behind this scooter, I have the 9Bot scooters. Now, all of the 9Bot scooters have the 9Bot app, which is the Segway app. Um, now, if you do connect the Bird ES1 or try to connect the Bird ES1 to that app, it tries to connect, uh, your scooter makes a beeping sound, but it quickly disconnects. So, there is a way to work around it. Uh, you just need to get a different dashboard from one of either a flash dashboard or a dashboard from one of the 9Bot scooters, and then you can connect it. So, it does take some tinkering. Now, why do you care if you have a Bluetooth app and are you actually going to use it? You need to think about that. But there is some cool features that you get out of the uh, app. Like you can set different cruising modes. Let's say if you're one, something that has a lot of kick to the power uh, to the scooter, you put it on that mode. If you're trying to do have a more of a commuter mode and you're trying to get from point A to point B without your battery dying, you can put that mode on keeps track of where you went, how far you went, what speed you went. It's a bit of a gamification system associated with it. And it's not a make or break, but for someone who is very much into techy techy things and electric scooters being one of them, it's something nice to have, especially some of the competitors around the same price range do have Bluetooth and app support associated with them. So, like I said, some of these things do play a major role in if you want to buy the Bird ES1. Some of them are not as much, but let me know if any of those factors would deter you from buying the Bird ES1. Now, in the next video, which I'm going to be really excited to make, is the five best features about the Bird ES1. If you're brand new to the channel, I'd appreciate you guys clicking that subscribe and bell notification so you'll be, be updated when the new videos come out. Uh, stay in touch with us on social. The new Sputnik ENT website is still in the works. It's going to be coming out very, very soon. By the way, I'm happy to say is that in about a week and a half, there's gonna be five Sputnik Entertainment videos at least a week coming out. So Monday through Friday, they're going to be coming out. I'm excited to start making more content for you guys because by the support you guys have been showing, truly means a lot. You guys are amazing. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and you can stay in touch with me and all things Spiding Entertainment related on social media. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.